there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter at the Easel with my very first oil painting tutorial. It's a longer video. Um, if you do watch it all the way through, I'd love your feedback on how long it was, if it was too long, if it was too much, if it was uh, not enough, please let me know. Uh, we're gonna do the background in acrylics. I'm gonna show you how to do that first, and then we'll move on to doing the flowers in water mixable oils. This is my palette here. I will put a list of materials below uh, in case you wanna use the exact colors that I used. Um, I'm using both the Reeves brand, which is very affordable, and also the Windsor & Newton Artisan water mixable oils. You can use regular oil paints. You could even use acrylics with some extender medium if you want to. So without further ado, because this video is long enough already, let's uh, get the background done. Here we go. Okay, first we're going to begin by putting a background in on our canvas. Now we're going to be working with um, water mixable oils eventually, but I like to do my background in acrylics because it'll dry quicker. You want your quicker drying layers underneath your slower drying layers. And um, what I'm going to do is actually apply some paint directly to my canvas. I've got some yellow ochre here. So I'll make sure I get my caps on good afterwards. I've got some magenta because I do want there to be some kind of pink in there too. I'm going to put some burnt sienna, or burnt umbra actually, it's a little bit less red of a brown. And um, I am going to use some gold, but I think I might hold off on that because it's just going to get muddy if I add it in right now. And um, some white, and I'm going to use quite a bit of white, so I think I'll probably end up using some more flowy white, but I'm just going to get some of that in to begin with. And then I'm actually going to start applying it with a sponge because I want a really natural looking uh, background. And I want to just kind of get this modeled look. Um, the camera might shake a bit because of the way that I have it arranged, so I apologize if that is the case. Um, I find the anti-shake feature to look a little dizzying when I use it, so I'll probably end up just keeping it like this. and. If this bothers you, I'll try to make a note of when the actual painting kicks in. I'm going to add a little bit of this liquid white here. This is just a mixture of gesso and um, white house paint, actually, but um, it's going to be fine. Now, what I will do is I go around the edges. This is a stretch canvas, but I will go around the edges on it just so I have a nice finished design. That way, if I don't want to frame it, um, I can hang it on the wall and there won't be any white raw edges there. So you just want to work your way around and cover up your canvas. I really like what the magenta does. Um, the orchids we're going to paint are going to be yellow and uh, magenta, so I don't want too much... I want the magenta in the background to kind of um, help cross-pollinate my colors, but I don't want it to compete with my foreground. So just keep going around and sponging in your background, and um, I'll be back in just a minute. All right, now if you want, if you want to soften it up a little bit, you can kind of twist the sponge um, so you're not having all these little sharp bits of color. You can kind of twist a little bit here and there, soften some areas. You can add some more dark, some more light. Um, you don't, you, you want it, it's the background, so it should look very, um, it should be interesting and the color should be nice, but you don't want anything that's really going to detract from the from the foreground. So just twisting your um, twisting your sponge can really help soften the soften the uh, work. Then um, I don't know if I can I can't really tip it up so you can see. Maybe I can. Oh, there. Then you just want to go around the edges and just kind of drag that paint over and uh, make sure you get your edges done too. So go around and do that whole thing and um, then I'm going to show you another layer we're going to do on the background before we begin our painting. Okay, I have this stencil here that I just picked up. Actually, I ordered it um, uh, last weekend from joanne.com. It's a die cuts with a view stencil and the thing I really like about it is that it's it's really huge. I actually got it for scrapbooking and art journaling, but the scale of this of this design is so big that I thought, you know, this would actually be much better for like a large canvas. And I am just using um, acrylic paint on a makeup sponge, and I am just going to stencil in a little bit of a pattern here with um, gold acrylic paint. Oh, I really should have my smock on and not my sweater. I've uh, I've got to run out to the grocery store, so I thought this is you know I'm gonna get the background done on this now and then come back and paint the orchids after it's all dry and that way I won't be fussing with it or trying to paint it before it's ready or heating it with a heat gun and you know I, I really don't think you should heat acrylic paint with a heat gun I know a lot of people do but you know that's plastic so yeah I'm just uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it be and then I always have a better idea 
like after I've let it percolate, if I've started a project and I've let it percolate a bit, it seems like I always have like kind of better ideas on like how to approach it when I come back to it. So, um, so this kind of forces me to do that. Um, I am going to be painting the orchid. I'm going to show you the orchid too that I'll be painting. I got it from my, um, children from Mother's Day and, um, my husband says, um, we wish you the best of luck, plant, because <laughs> I have a notorious black thumb, but I, I'm really going to try to to keep it alive, but hey, if I don't, at least I'll have a lovely painting of it. I really, I'm really hoping that I can turn my uh, luck with plants around this year. I've got a uh, plans to make a garden. I've got a bed, a raised bed all picked out that I want to purchase at the Home Depot, and um, some of those cedar ones on sale. I'm hoping that, uh, that they have them in stock when I go over there and I can get a lovely garden going this year. Wish me luck. I've been looking at some blogs and some Pinterest boards with the, you know, little square foot gardening ideas and um, I'm just gonna keep it, you know, simple and easy and just start out with like half a dozen vegetables and if it goes well I'll add more next year. Um, Alright, I think that's really all I want. I just want a little something um, in there. And I'm just gonna look that up. Ooh, I really like that. Um, I might actually do that a little bit to the other corner as well. So, you know, you can add as much or as little as you like. You can even kind of feather off the edges a little bit if you want to with your sponge. Um, I don't think this pattern repeats, so I just kind of want to add a little bit maybe in the um, opposite corner and then call it good. Because again, this is just the background. This is not really gonna stand out that much after we've done our painting. Just adding a little bit of that, just kind of feathering out my sponging so it's not so, so it doesn't look like I've just got a big uh, chunk of gold and then nothing else. So I'm just kind of feathering that out a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other corner. Then I'm going to go grocery shopping. And then in a couple hours, <laughs> I'm actually going to come back and uh, we're going to do some painting. So yes, I'm editing. Isn't that crazy? Uh, so we'll catch you back in a little bit when we go to uh, do the actual painting. Hi, Lindsay here at the canvas. Yes, I know I look like a dork. I've got my glasses on, but yeah, I want to see. <laughs> um, I want to show you this flower that um, my kids got me for Mother's Day. It's a beautiful orchid. Um, hoping for the best that I can keep it alive. Um, but we're going to paint this today, so at least I'll have a lovely painting of it. And um, we're going to begin by sketching. I'm using water and mixable oil. So if you're using traditional oil paints, you'll just want a little cup of um, turpentine or odorless mineral spirits or something. Um, I'm going to use water because I have water mixable paints. And basically what I'm going to do is take a stiff brush. And um, I got my palette here. And I'm going to grab some um, burnt umber and a little bit of sap green. You see that there, burnt umber. And here's a tip when you get your when you have a palette, I like to just kind of wipe it off after a session, let it get this nice neutral gray color, and it's really easy to mix your colors against that because it looks really natural. Um, so if you're using water, water mixable paints, you can go ahead and thin this with a little water like I'm doing. Or if you're using regular oils, go ahead and use some turpentine. And I want to do my branch a little different because this thing is, um, I think you can see that there. That plant is uh, strapped down to that frame, but I kind of want more of a natural um, branch. So I'm just going to go in and put in my branch. My background is completely dry. I was good. I was a good girl. I went and did my groceries did my chores before I came to paint and now I'm just picking up a little sap green and adding it to my branch and um, the reason your brushes are longer when you um, oil paint um, is so you can work at an easel and you can stand back and it's really uh, easy to see how you're coming along when you can stand away from your painting um, I could have done this at the table but with such a large can large canvas I know I would have my uh, my perspective would be skewed as I painted so this is why I'm moving to the easel I probably should take the time to put a little makeup on, but eh, whatever. We're all friends here. Um, I only bother to do the full makeup for Ask a Crafter. Because <laughs> then you're staring at my ugly mug for 20 minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is thin down a little white, and I'm going to sketch my blossoms on. I'm not going to put as many on that are right there, because um, then they, they might get lost. I want to get it, I want to have it kind of, I just want to have maybe like between three and five blooms, and I think I'll start one up here, that la the back petal there. I have two ones on the side. Um, I really like the water mixable oil paints because they stay 
Um, they stay wet for, you know, while you're working on it. They do dry a little quicker than oils, but, you know, they're not going to dry while you're working on them like acrylics would. Um, and then you can just rinse them with water and then follow up with soap and water. And it's just so much easier to deal with. And it was funny because I was complimenting my sister on a painting, some rose modeling that she had just done. And I assume she did them with acrylics because um, she does a lot of tool painting. And um, she said, no, no, they're, they're oils. And I was like, wow, that's great. And... Um, I, we were talking about water mixable oils, and I, and I said that I'm going to use those once in a while. Um, I don't like to, I just don't like the cleanup. I don't want to have to deal with solvents. And she's like, well, I've got a bunch of water mixable oils you can have because I can't stand them. So she gave me a bunch that she had kicking around in her studio. Um, so I was kind of happy to have them. I'm going to put another one up here, maybe off to the side. Kind of like this one, I'm kind of seeing like a side view, so I'm going to get this more of a side view. Um, and I'm sketching with white because I know I'm going to be mixing some white in there. So I might as well just get that out of the way to begin with. If you're, oh, if you're using traditional oil paints, you can use, um, oil pastels, oil, yeah, oil pastels, oil crayons, um, those, that would be a great, um, a great thing to do. And I want to put another big one over here. This will be kind of my biggest one, I think. I'm not bothering with the little um, center of the flower. I'm just getting the main petals put in here. And I like kind of this one. There's one here I can kind of see from the back, and I kind of want to put that in. This uh, over here have like kind of a one that's facing away from me, just for a little extra contrast. Whenever you can, um, paint from life, because you will get, you know, you'll just, you'll be able to turn something around. If you're not really clear on how something looks, you can spin it around and see it from the other side. All right, I'm not going to worry about time too much with this video. Um, I mean, I'm going to try to keep it fairly, um, fairly quick for you, but I want to make sure that I can, you know, show you how to do this. I used to teach um, a lot of oil painting classes, and uh, it was very much a paint after me type thing. I'm going to put in the big, the big leaves here. I have this one kind of bent over, like that one is there in my pot. I have it so you can see the back side there and. Have, I think I'll just have two leaves on there. Have this one kind of up here. And I can, you know, don't be afraid to go right off the edge. Um, oh, maybe I'll throw one more in. Feels like it needs one more. Um, I've got, you know, there are like five leaves there. So I'm just going to pick one that I feel would go, would go a little bit better. And be, having the ability to stand back here and really see how my composition looks is very helpful. So, you know, if you don't have an easel, prop your canvas up like if you have a table, prop it up against the wall so you can kind of stand back and, and uh, you know, be creative, use what you have. I actually purchased my, this is a French easel. It's got a drawer in it, so like I have my palette resting on it, but there's a drawer under here that's full of uh, my paint brushes and paints and stuff. It's great to take out if you want to paint on location, but it's also great for storing, you know, the supplies you need for a particular, um, project and I actually got my children easels like that, table easels like that, and it's great because they can keep all their supplies right there and drag it out to the table when they're ready to paint since they don't have their own studios. Um, I'm going to use a larger flat brush. I'm going to use sap green. Oh, another thing I wanted to show you, I'm using a, a mixture of artisan um, oil paints from Windsor Newton and also I found these at Martin's for six dollars, water mixable oil colors, it was a set of ten. I don't know if they have this available at the craft store, but um, if they do, it would probably be about $10. This was six at Martin's. I thought it was a heck of a deal and to replenish some of my colors. Um, so, you know, you can also, this sap green is from that set. Seems to be very comparable in quality. Um, Reeves is made by the same company that makes Windsor and Newton. So, seems to be, seems to be pretty good. So, if you're looking for a less expensive alternative, give that a try. And now I'm painting in the green more where I have the shadows. If you need a crisper line, just wet your brush, ink up the paint a little bit, and just kind of push that paint around on the edge. Now, I've never done a video using oil paints before, so I'm hoping that, um, that this comes out all right. I'm picking up a little yellow ochre and adding it to the uh, highlight areas of my leaf. It really also helps making it a little more opaque. This will be interesting though, because when I watch it back, I'll be able to see what my <laughs> what my students had to put up with all those years of my oil painting glasses. You 
Now there's lots of surfaces you can use oil paints on. Um, if you want to use paper, you want to gesso it first because the oil paint will rot the paper eventually, so keep that in mind. Um, one surface that's really inexpensive and wonderful to paint on is hardboard, and you can go to the um, hardware store or the lumberyard like Lowe's or Home Depot, and you can get a, um, a four foot by eight foot sheet of it for between eight and thirteen dollars depending on the thickness. They're very affordable. You can even have them cut it down a bit for you for free. They do for free at Lowe's anyway. And then just chop it down to the size you want and uh, give it a few coats of gesso standing in between coats and it's a fabulous surface for painting on. I want to add some uh, dark and I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt umber and I'm just going to add a little bit of dark here in the, in the uh, dimple area of this leaf. And what I'll probably do is I'll paint this leaf, get this one all done, and then um, we may revisit it, but then I'm going to go into the flowers. So that way if, I do, if it starts to get long, you can just kind of refer back to this leaf when you're painting your other leaves. Now you can see how long you can work in here and blend it. If you're using acrylics, which you totally can, um, you may want to have a little, uh, it's called extender. It's an acrylic medium that you mix with your paints and it makes it act like oil paints. It just keeps it wetter longer. Um, so that's a great, a, great, uh, a great product for that. Just it increases the open time. Now I got a little too much burnt over there that's making it a little too dark. So I'm going to grab in a little more sap green. And the nice thing about it is you can think about it. You can just kind of leave it and be like, well, I don't know. And you can come back to it later and decide what you want to do. Um, you can always use acrylics for your background and paint over it with oil paints. That's, uh, that's a really fun thing about it. So you can get that background in really quickly and then go over it with your, with your oils. And it's kind of fun. I mean, it's almost sculptural because you can keep going back and forth and playing in it and uh, really get it just the way you want it. I still think that's a little dark. I think a little more yellow. I'm going to do a little yellow ochre in there and kind of brighten that up a little bit. Okay, and that, I have that kind of exaggerated how it's bent over there, but I'm not going to worry about it. You don't have to do it that exaggerated if you don't want to because it's your painting. Looks all droopy. Looks like I've had something to do with this plant, that droopy leaf there. And then finally, I uh, want a little bit of a white sheen on the uh, on the leaf if you want it to look like an orchid leaf or a reasonable facsimile. Um, I'm just going to grab a little bit of the white. This is just titanium white. I'm going to go in um, where the leaf is bent. I'm just flicking in a little of that white paint. And I, you know, if you've painted with acrylics before, I think you would find oils to be very easy, um, as long as you just keep in mind that they dry very slowly. Um, so just relax and take your time. There. Okay, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a highlight up here on this bend. There. So you can kind of get a nice glow. Um, I think that the water mixable paints does a really good job at um, at replicating the look of oil of traditional oil paints. You know, they they're not as buttery, they're not as creamy as the oils, traditional oils. Um, so if you have been a long time user of oils, you may not care for it. For me, the occasional oil painter, it's ideal. You know, I don't have to have bottles of solvents around. Um, so I and I can just you know. Pull it out whenever the whenever the need arises, whenever I feel like it. All right, I want to base coat my flowers. I'm going to use a mix of lemon yellow and titanium white. And that is going to give me the um, the background color so I can put the, uh, I'll be able to put the magenta veining on it afterwards. mixing it up all here on my palette. Sometimes I hold my palette, but right here I've got this handy dandy little tray. My, my drawer's out and I can just set it on there so that works out pretty well. This paint's a little stiff. Probably because it hasn't been used in a while. Ugh. Now look at this. Look at my brush. I've got paint all the way up to the bell part. That is not what you want to do. That is, um, that's bad for your brush and you don't have any control over your brush when you've got that much paint on it. So what I'm going to do is scrape that off of there. 
and I'm going to wash that brush thoroughly in a bit, but I'm just going to grab a fresh brush for right now. We use this one. This looks pretty good. And just start filling in your flowers. Don't forget to, to look back at your, um, well, I'm looking at my thing. You can obviously look at my picture, but I'm, I'm looking back just to make sure I haven't gone terribly wrong anywhere. Now, you're, if you're not used to painting on canvas, there is a bit of a drag, like it, the, the paint drags a bit. So if you're using traditional oil paints, you can add a little paint thinner or um, you can add a little linseed oil. I usually reserve using linseed oil to the end. That's for traditional oils. If you're using these water mixable oils, you could just add a little bit of water right now if you want to. I'm gonna grab a little bit more yellow and add it to the center of these flowers, or this flower rather. And just make sure my edges are nice and crisp. So I'd be dipping into thinner. Every time I dip into oil, uh, water here is when I'd be dipping into thinner. All right, so you wanna do that for each of those flowers. Um, oh, I'll do another one to show you and then I think we'll skip ahead to doing some of the detail. And this is the one that's looking over to the side a little bit. I can't see any of the little, oh, there's, I don't think there's any little buds on there. It'd be cool to kind of get a little bud on there, but I don't have any there to go by. That's all right. I think these five flowers will do quite nicely. And you can see I'm just kind of like going over that branch and it's just kind of picking up that paint and mixing it right in. It's not hurting anything. And this one over here is one that we're seeing from the back. So I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to go in there and actually paint this one pretty much all at once and going in my white and my yellow I'll be adding a little bit of green to that got a big blob on there I didn't even look to see how much time off oh, 15 minutes um, this is gonna be a long video I hope I can upload it in my in Smallville slow internet connection land <laughs> I'm telling you what Takes so long to upload a long video around here. All right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, cause this is the one that's facing away from me and I wanna kinda get it done right now. I'm gonna add a little more yellow in this top petal and this one here on the bottom that I can see behind that, that, um, that petal that's there in front. I'm gonna add a little bit of sap green. See if some sap green on the back the top and to the bottom. Now we're going to have a little stem coming out of there, but first, get that right up to the edge. I'm going to get a little bit of magenta and clean off. Let me just go with a different brush, a smaller brush here. There we go. And a little bit of magenta. And I'm going to go in around the edges. Oh, that's a pretty color, isn't it? And just kind of, kind of flick it in. And this is a great one to begin on because this isn't one you really have to worry about. This is one facing the back. And my brush is not very fine. I'm using kind of a, uh, it's a flat, it's a number two flat, which is about a quarter of an inch wide. So it's nothing, um, it's not like a number two synthetic flat. It's much bigger. And I'm just kind of throwing in a little bit of this around the edges up here too. And around the center. Now the stem's gonna come out from the back of this and go right to the branch. I don't think I'm going to put that in yet. I want that set up a little bit. But um, so that's all there is to that one that's kind of facing away from us. In fact, I think I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see more of the flowers and less of me. Hopefully. Ooh, there we go. There we 
that's a little bit better. All right, so now I'm going to go into this flower here because I think you can see this one the most clearly. And um, by following what I do on this flower, that's what you'll be doing to the other ones. We're going to want a uh, fine round brush. And this is a synthetic brush. It is a number six round, Robert Simmons. And I'm going to add some water to my magenta paint uh, so that I can get it nice and thin. And I am going to start in the center and I am just gonna kind of trace that petal. I'm just going to flip some color out and see it's just blending in with what we already have, which is really nice. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to this petal over here. Add water when your paint starts to drag. easy as can be. And that's just giving us a nice um, overall color for the center. Um, we're going to do the same thing up at the top, the top petal. Just got to flick. Now this paint I think will probably be dry to the touch, slightly tacky tomorrow, but it won't take nearly as long as oil paint does to dry completely which is another advantage. I share my space down here with my husband. He's a woodworker, so there's always dust. So I need to, I don't want to have wet paint hanging around for too long or it's just going to get really dusty. Here, I'm going to drag my color in. And do the same thing to the other side. Nature tends to be quite symmetrical. And you can go on the internet. If you don't have any orchids at home, you can go on the internet and, uh, you know, Wikipedia, look for some orchids. Okay, before I get bogged down in the veins on this flower, I want to paint the center. Um, and I'm going to use some magenta to first paint this kind of diamond shape petal on the bottom. I might need to switch to a stiffer brush, but we'll try with this one and see how we go. It's kind of just the diamond. Fill it right in. Nothing hard about that. It's kind of like it's sticking its tongue out at you, isn't it? Sassy, sassy orchids. My sister has so many orchids growing in her house. I hope I can keep one alive. It's all I hope. It's all I can. <laughs> if I can keep this orchid alive, I'll be so impressed with myself. All right, then the little, um, and then these is little kind of semicircle petals here. Right, just little semicircles. I think those are pretty. And you can kind of drag some of that color from the circle part towards the center. And then there's kind of like a little little hood over the uh, the entire center. And I'm just going to make a little dash with my paint and then I'm going to clean my brush and grab some white. I hope you're uh, painting along with me um, because I am hoping to do this tutorial in a way that makes you feel that you can just grab your paints and, and paint right along. Um, I'm going to need a little, I'm going to need to refine that in a little bit, but at least I've got that shape right there. And it will be a little bit of a white tip on the bottom too on this part here and just kind of drag that in. Super fancy. Now I want to grab some pure lemon yellow with my, uh, I'm going to keep with that same brush it is. You could go with a stiffer um, natural bristle brush if you prefer, like a hog bristle, a more traditional 
um, brushes. Those are very durable. You really want to be careful on the rule of the paintbrush not getting the paint up to the metal part when you're using synthetic brushes because they're very hard to come back for, from if you damage them. I'm just going to do a little bit of that brighter yellow near the um, flat side of your semicircle there. And a little bit. I'm going to try to get a fairly good gob of uh, both of my yellows, my yellow ochre and my cad my lemon yellow, right in the center there. I'm just going to kind of tap it in there. All right, we're going to let that be, and we're going to go back to the petals again. Let that uh, set up just a little bit before we try to go into any detail. I am going to get a... Um, even smaller brush. This is a synthetic brush. It is a um, number. Um, now, see, this is number four, but it's it's really quite a bit smaller because it's it's short handled. It's meant for acrylics, but that's all right. You could still use it for this. Just got to make sure you clean it really well. Um, and once I've used a brush with oils, that becomes an oil painting brush for me. Uh, it just it's good not to not to mix and match because you don't want oil residue getting in your acrylics. Um, you don't want your watercolor brushes, if you keep them for watercolor, they'll last you forever. You do need to eventually re uh, replace oil and acrylic brushes, but um, but anyway, yeah, sometimes I'll take pretty old acrylic brushes and they'll be my oil brushes because I know that they're, you know, and they'll be fine for that. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is start at the outside of my petal, and you could start from the inside if it's more comfortable for you, but I'm just going to do very small, tiny, veiny lines here. Now, can you see that or do we need to zoom in? Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's see how close we can get to that flower. Whoa, we're zooming out. I really want you to be able to see that well. Just tiny, tiny little lines. That's why, this is actually why I didn't want to do this in watercolor. I wanted to do this in, um, in oils because I knew I could build up. And of course, it would be very lovely in acrylics as well. And I am, when I reload my brush, can I show you that on the palette? Maybe I can. I'm twirling my brush, I'm twirling it in the paint, so I'm getting a nice fine tip, and my paint is, is, ink, is down to like the consistency of a, like a cream. You want that kind of inky consistency. Uh, I haven't had any problem with the paint bonding when I thin it down like that, but it would be a good idea just to treat this like you would an oil painting and give it a varnish once it's completely cured. You can use any oil-based varnish. Any any varnish you would use for a, an oil painting will be acceptable for this. Um, you treat it just like, just like you would an oil painting. The only difference is that you clean it up with soap and water. <laughs> you clean your brushes with soap and water. I'm going to do the same thing to all of the petals. All right, why don't you do the, let me see, I'm trying to see if any of the petals are really that much different. Um, I just don't want to bore anybody with a super long video. You can let me know. You can let me know if it was too much, if you're just like, yeah, we're, we're clear on the petals, Lindsay. You don't need to paint every one for us. Also, see how it looks when I edit it. When I edit it, look at me fancy smancy. Um, and if it looks like it's obviously the same thing over and over again and I don't need to show it, then I'll cut it. All right, so these up here, I'm just kind of making some lines down. If your paint drags more than you want it to, add a little more water. We're painting this all at once, or a la prima is the term. So you don't have to worry so much about adding too much. When you're painting things over like a several days or weeks, um, every layer you want to be fatter, which I don't think is, which means you wouldn't add so much solvent. In this case, water. In the case of traditional oils, would be oil, uh, linseed oil. Um, you'd start off adding thinner, then add oil as you go. Um, but you, when you're painting something all at once, it's all kind of drying at the same time. It's all going on at the same time. You don't have to worry about that as much as you would otherwise. Okay, so you can really, you can really go quickly after you get in the, get in the hang of it. Getting the, getting the flow. I forget how long it <laughs> takes to do a, um, a regular, a proper painting, a regular painting anyway. Yeah, we'll do. We'll finish up this flower. It's gonna be the same idea for the other flowers too. Um, no. Let's go 
back to the center of this flower and um, refine our bottom part a little bit. Let's go in with a little bit of that magenta. I'm going to drag that white back just a little bit for some contrast. And I really want to look at the flower. You know what? I think I want to add a little bit of blue to the magenta, make kind of like a, a little bit of a darker purple color for some of the inside part of that of that f this uh, petal right here, right near the uh, right near the flat area of that semicircle we drew. And then I think I'm going to add a little bit of that to the bottom. Well, I'm at it. I try to find different places where I see that same shade. You don't want your colors to get muddy, so try to keep that purpley color out of the yellow. All right, magenta is a very pure color, so it's not going to make mud with probably any of the other colors, but that purple that you've mixed, that will make mud. So I'm going to go in with the magenta on the edge here and go right into the yellow with that magenta kind of sidestepping the purple and just bring the bottom of that petal in. Um, I'm also going to get some of that purple right on the top of that little hood area. There we go. Let me step back and take a look at that. Hmm. I feel like I need a little bit of a shadow underneath some of these, these two petals right there to kind of push the bottom petals back a little bit. Um, and I do have to be very careful because my paint's wet. This is an acrylic, so I do have to be careful. I'm actually going to use a very soft brush. I'm going to use a soft um, flat nylon. This right here will work. This is a, uh, I really like these Robert Simmons um, Sienna, Sienna brushes. These are really nice. Um, I'm going to mix up some gray using just a little bit of the uh, ultramarine blue, a little bit of my sap green, so I'm using colors I've already used. Here, Lacey, can you see that? And a little bit of my magenta. So I know it's going to look good because it's going to match. And I'm going to add some water to that to make sure it's nice and thin. And there, see when I water it, I can see that's a nice uh, kind of plum color, plum shadow, and that's going to go right underneath this petal, and it's going to mix in, so even though it looked really dark, it's really not, it's going to mix in, so I'm going to do that on the other side over here, maybe even a little up here, and then wipe my brush off on a clean spot on my palette and grab the color, that, that shadow color, a little bit um, more intensely on the tip of my brush. And I'm just going to use the chisel edge of my brush. I'm just going to go in there and deepen the shadow right where it meets the other petal. So that's the only, that's the only thing about working with oils and you, if you're doing it all in one setting is that one sitting rather is that you're going to um, you're going to run into places where you wish your paint was dry underneath and it isn't. And you also want to keep that freshness, so be careful that you don't end up with too much mud. I'm just flicking that up. It's a soft brush, so it's not going to disturb the paint underneath as much as like a hog bristle would. And I think I will add a little magenta into that. Let me clean my brush. Gosh, I love not having to use thinner <laughs> with these. I'm just going to add a little magenta in there just to keep it fresh. and really have a nice definition between those petals. So you'll want to do this to each one of your petals. All right, and um, let's go back to that. that uh, oh, yeah, let me show you the stem. Um, let's see, I'm just going to look at my plant here. The stems are light. They're a mixture of white and sap green. And so make a, make a mixture of white and sap green on your palette. I'll do that with you here. White. This is sap green. That's a little too green. I got a little too much paint on my brush. 
Get a little lemon yellow in there for freshness. We don't want a stale stem. No stale stems. And I'm just gonna, because I know that the stem is directly behind the center of that flower, I'm just gonna zip it back to the, to the, uh, to the stem. It needs a little bit more yellow to the main stalk of the plant, I mean. I'm gonna do a little bit more yellow in there. That's looking a little too minty for me. And I'm gonna add a little yellow ochre to the bottom of that because the stem is a little bit more yellow where it comes off the stalk. And I am going to wipe that off the petal where it went to where it shouldn't have. And while I'm at it, I can add some of that yellow ochre to the other parts of the stalk and let it blend in because that warms it up and makes it look really lively. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to finish painting the flowers here. Actually, I will zip, zip it over here and show you that one here on the end. We'll, put, we'll paint the little stalk in that for right now, right now while you're here. And then I, when I come back, I'll have the other leaves done and the other flowers done and I'll just show you some finishing touches uh, for the painting. First, we'll get this little guy, uh, well, this little guy painted here. Just kind of make his stem go up and over. Just like that. I know it doesn't stand out very much now, but um, but we can actually, I can add some shadows with it right now while I got you here. Let's add a little bit of green, a little sap green. I haven't cleaned my brush. I don't want anything to be too drastic here. I'm gonna add some, just some shadows around that stem. And add a little bit of magenta. Right around there. Make that stem stand out. Clean my brush, move it over to the round one, and then repaint my stem in a little bit lighter so it will definitely show up there. There we go, that's a little bit better. We'll put a little highlight on that after it sets up a little bit. There we go. All right, let's, I'll finish the flowers, we'll be back and we'll finish up the painting together. Okay, we finished the picture. Well, I finished the picture. I worked on this. It took me about 45 minutes to paint the other two leaves and the other blossoms. So just to kind of give you an idea of how long it might take you to finish it. Um, you're painting these other three blossoms the same way we painted the first one. Um, and the leaves, the other two leaves were done the exact same way as the first one was done. Um, and you know, that's pretty much all there is to it. I did want to show you something really quick on the leaves. Um, and I'm sorry about saying um so much. <laughs> oh boy. Um, and there I go again. Take a little bit of white paint or just like a little bit of yellow ochre with, with white to do your highlights. If you just kind of tap in a little bit of color where you want your highlights to be and then take a clean flat brush or fan brush, whatever you have that's, that's uh, pretty wide, you can just kind of brush over it like that and you'll get that nice sheen on the leaves that the orchid leaves have. So there's just a little tip for you. Paint, paint, paint. That's how you get better. Uh, use acrylics if you don't have oils. Use a little extender with them if you want to mimic the re results. Use regular oils, use water mixables. Uh, they're all gonna work really good. Here again is the flower that was the inspiration of this. I'm gonna go put it upstairs in my sunny windowsill and Wish me luck, guys, that I can keep this alive. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I will answer it. And if you if you like this, I don't know how this is gonna go across. It's a long video. If you like this video and you wanna see more with the oils, leave a comment, let me know. If it's just too long, just let me know that too. That's fine. Um, that's it. Thumbs up and subscribe if you like this video. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, happy crafting.